which encrypted messaging service do you trust and which should you question? Should you trust any one of them? Maybe all of them are kind of weird because right now when I look at the history, both WhatsApp and Signal are kind of linked to each other because it's the same founder of both, one for-profit, one non-profit. The one from Telegram that when I ran the poll, these were the results. Telegram came up as number one. 50% of people trust Telegram the most. And then it was Signal at 29% and then WhatsApp at 21%. But what's the story behind this? You know what the founder of Telegram, who's apparently worth between 15 billion to 30 billion dollars said here's what he said he said it looks almost as if big tech in the u.s is not allowed to build its own encryption protocols that would be independent of government interference what is he saying where does he live where was he born who should we trust? We're going to talk about all that stuff today. All right, stick around till the very end to see who's behind Signal, by the way. Kind of weird. But anyways, if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. So Signal, Telegram, WhatsApp. Launch date, Signal, July 2014. Telegram, August 2013. WhatsApp, the oldest, 2009. Founder CEO, Signal, Brian Acton. Telegram, Pavel Durov, who owns 100% of it. But look at WhatsApp, Brian Acton. Wait, the same founder of WhatsApp is the same founder of Signal? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Let's just continue. Let's not be a little too skeptical revenue signal is a nonprofit. the guy brian acton put 50 million dollars into it as a nonprofit in 2017 small donations now account for about 25 percent of its operating costs telegram roughly in 2022 that a 52 million dollar revenue and then whatsapp obviously 382 million dollars when it comes on to employees signal has 50 employees telegram has 32 employees whatsapp has 2500 employees when we look at market cap signal is a nonprofit. when you think about telegram roughly 30 billion give or take whatsapp 98 billion dollars active users signal 40 million as of april 2024 telegram is at 900 million users whatsapp 2 billion download signal 155 million times as of 2022 telegram passed a billion dollars in 2022 whatsapp 5 billion end to end encryption they all claim they have it open source telegram and signal say they are whatsapp is no max group size signal a thousand messages you can send in a group telegram is 200,000 users and whatsapp is 1024 voice and video calls all of them self-destructive messages all of them cross-platform all of them file sharing limits signal 100 megabytes telegram's the biggest with two gigabytes then it's whatsapp 16 multi-device support all message syncing all customization options signal is limited telegram is extensive and whatsapp is limited Limited. When it comes down to cost, Signal is free. Telegram is also free with a premium option. WhatsApp is free. Subscription model, Signal doesn't have one. Telegram is $4.99 premium. WhatsApp doesn't have one. Revenue model, Signal is donations and grants. Telegram is premium subscription feature ads on public channels. And WhatsApp is WhatsApp business services. And my concern is whenever you don't pay for something, you're sometimes the product. When the word free comes out, there's something going on there. Why is Signal doing this free? I don't know. So let's learn a little bit about the founder. It's really only three of them because Brian Acton is the co-founder of WhatsApp. WhatsApp as well as Signal. Before that, it used to be with Yahoo. I think he even tested products at Apple back in the days. Anyways, when Facebook buys WhatsApp, he leaves later on and starts Signal with the $50 million he puts into it. He's worth a few billion dollars. When you think about Pavel, he was born in Leningrad, Russia. Now he lives in UAE. I think he's the richest expat in UAE, Dubai, where he lives. Again, some say he's worth $15 billion, Some say he's worth $30 billion because he owns 100% of Telegram. So this is where Signal gets a little bit of criticism with two people that they have on their boards. Let me give you the first one. First one is Amba. I will not pronounce the last name because there's some kids that watch this thing, but you can kind of figure out what's the right way to pronounce this. She also serves as senior advisor at the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, where she advised the regulator on emerging technology issues. She's at Signal, huh? And then Catherine Marr, who is also now recently announced the CEO of NPR. They sit on the board of Signal. When you see who's on the board, that should kind of give you an idea where they lean. By the way, FYI, Disney, their board member, they keep protecting. They don't want that to be lost. They keep making the movies. They keep losing money. So I'm not saying anything. 29% of people that I did the poll still trust Signal as number two, as well as a lot of people on the right side. Many people on right, center, and left trust Signal, but Telegram is at a whole different level. This is why it goes back to the quote that Pavel said. It looks almost as if big tech in the U.S. is not allowed to build its own encryption protocols that would be independent of government interference. What does he mean by this? And by the way, just a couple weeks ago, Telegram CEO calls out rival Signal, claiming it has ties to the U.S. government. This is his claim. $3 million grants from the U.S. government Open Technology Fund. The current chair of the Signal Foundation is Catherine Marr from 
from 2010 to 2011, she worked on the National Democratic Institute, a U.S.-backed NGO. Reports been said that Mar was an agent of regime change during the Arab Spring and communicated with dissidents in the Middle East and North Africa. And remember how we talked about the $3 million grant, you know, U.S. government spent $3 million to build signals encryption. And today, the same exact encryption is implemented by WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Google Messages, and even Skype, says the Telegram leader. He also claims that many of the signal messages have popped up in court cases or in the media. How? Who leaked it? And if you remember earlier when I said all the apps, two of them are open source and one of them is not, which is WhatsApp, he criticized WhatsApp for not publishing its source code, saying all their talk about privacy is an even more obvious circus trick. Who bought WhatsApp? Facebook. And by the way, if you go on YouTube, you're like, oh, this, this is about to confuse you. If you go on YouTube and type in Elon Musk three years ago, he was for CNN, Signal, ExpressVPN, which a lot of conservative podcasters and YouTube channels sponsor. They're leaning towards Signal. So this isn't like it's all lopsided, Telegram, Telegram, Telegram. You got to do your own research. The reality of it is, do you trust anybody? Should you feel comfortable with all of them? Some people trust one or the other, but uh, there's people that uh, will criticize any one of them. But based on what we're hearing here, Telegram seems to get the victory based on some of the things that they offer that maybe Signal and WhatsApp is a little bit too linked to each other. You can second guess some of their motives that they have behind closed doors. And if you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I got another video I want you to watch. If you're a little bit also uncomfortable with the government being involved with everything you're trying to do, and if you've never seen a video we did on CBDC, I think you'll enjoy this video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.